Hello, welcome. This is Off the Press on Plus TV Africa. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I have two gentlemen with me to help make sense of all the headlines making the rounds this morning in the papers. Um, to Bosu Akeju. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks Your for reputation me. manager. Yeah. And of course, we have Dr. Femi Ido Adeguke, public affairs analyst. Pleasure to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning. Good it's good. a day to Christmas, so yeah. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas mm. to you. <laughs> How are you spending it after today? Um, I mean, 30 December is still everywhere, so <laughs> we'll, make it, we'll make it as responsible as possible. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the Nation newspaper. Uh, that's the first for review this morning. And the big one here is the fiasco in Abuja yesterday. That's the picture on your screen on um, a move, a clash of protesters. That's how the paper is tagging it this morning. Um, the protesters, anti omoyele Shawari protesters, and pro Shawari protesters at the National Human Rights Commission uh, yesterday in Abuja. Um, if you've been following the news, you probably would have seen the story as brought to us by our Bu uh, Abuja Buru uh, chief, Ahmadine. Uh, he captured all that happened uh, yesterday there. Um, my guests will share their thoughts in a bit, but let's uh, look at all the headlines here this morning. Uh, missing baby, magistrate remands a Kure cleric, Babatunde. You find details on page five of the paper. At the very top of uh, the masthead, you'll be seeing 2020 UTM e registration begins January 13, exams for March 14. Abdus Salami governors others to reconcile Gandhi Jason. You see that paper, that story was captured yesterday in the papers as well. Um, we are looking at Makainde urges chairman to be our ears and eyes. Esco is inaugurated. Okay. That has so many interpretations, the way the headline is phrased. Well, let's see the big one again this morning on the front page of the nation. Governors, why we want revised revenue formula. Uh, George declines to hear Shawari's case as uh, protesters clash. That's for the photograph that you saw earlier. And then uh, a couple of writers to the governors, why we want revised revenue formula. Of course, on the back page, we have something this morning. Um, Godi Namdi, what will Jibril Aminu say? Who are these men being mentioned? Go read at home and abroad on the back page of the paper. Let's get our guest in now. We'll start with uh, to Boston. Which of these headlines would you want to start with? Uh, let me just push you to the protest for him yesterday. Um, it, uh, it was a rather unfortunate um, situation in Abuja yesterday with the clash of the protesters. Um, on the brighter side, I'm happy that um, no life was lost. But I think that it was, there was a lot of carelessness on the side of the security forces yesterday. Um, the two parties, as it were, we're, ex we're exercising the right to protest. Um, how the security forces right in front of them could not, you know, prevent a clash is what, you know, begs, you know, um, to be answered as it were this morning. Um, um, and, and I just think that we need to, you know, be able to properly and do situations like this so that they don't degenerate into a uh, major crisis. And that will take me quickly to the judge, you know, declining to hear Shure's case. Um, I mean, I think that sometimes our headlines should be in ways that do not over issues. The real problem here is that um, in 2016, the judge did claim that Sarah Reporters, which Shure is a publisher of, had published the news about him. Now, just to let you know, what you're seeing on the screen is excerpts from yesterday's uh, protest that's captured in the report by our correspondent in Abuja. Okay. Go um, ahead. Yeah, sorry. so as I was saying, um, and he's saying that, I mean, I'm not happy about what you guys published in 2016, and I'm not sure that I'm, not, I'm going to be completely unbiased. And even if I you know, issue a judgment yes. People in favor who, as of you, career, yeah, there's, there's always. You know, and what, what, what got me really worried is the fact that the judge then did say that he had declined to take the case and it was brought back to him. So the question I'm asking is, did he give a reason why he's not taking the case and it was brought back to him? Or 
Um, is it possible that I just decline and you did not give an excuse? Let me bring Femi in question. and ask yeah. him. The, the reason given by the judge yeah. for declining, does that stand for you as fair enough? Yeah, it, it does because um, the judge actually said he, uh, there are two ways to it. He, he gave two reasons. That Shawere had indicted him uh, by his uh, true Sorry, uh, Sarah yes. reporter. That if he rules, if he takes the case and rules in favor of Shore, it will be a seed is, because yeah, Shore has blackmailed him or something. And if he rules in the favor of a government or DSS this time around, that it will be seen as like a revenge, a revenge yeah. on Shore. So for me, if, we look, if our judiciary is really serious about it, they shouldn't have taken the case back to him. Yeah. It, the reasons were good enough yeah, for it's me clear. on integrity, on uh, the kind of job they do. It's clear. Being the, the upholder of the law of the land, they shouldn't be seen as having one side or the other. So he, he, the man gave, so, like he said, the headline does not do justice to it. When yeah, I, the, I, I, the headline I, in itself, it, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's intended to get you to read what the content is. It just said declines to hear Shore's case. You can't expect the explanation you've given to be captured on the front page, not in defense of what the headline is saying, yeah. but the headline is just basically, he did decline it, yeah, he did. but his reasons is what we're analyzing now, yeah. and you're saying it makes a whole lot of sense yeah. that he chose to uh, move away from the case. Okay, let's move on and see uh, the governor's uh, looking for revised yeah. revenue formula. So <laughs> there, there are two sides to the story. So Governor Fayemi is actually right to say that the state have bigger responsibilities. What um, is a bit worrisome is the fact that the states seems most of the states in Nigeria are not self-sustaining because if you say you're the one with the bigger responsibility, I think that one of the things that the state should be fighting for is a situation where you are self-sustaining. There are very, very few states in Nigeria that are self-sustaining. You know, so I mean, the, the argument to revise the formula so that you know um, the states are in shape to be able to pay the new minimum wage is a good argument. But I think the big argument or the most important conversation here is that the states have to be self-sustaining. You know, so saying that, oh, they want, I mean, what the recommendation they are making is for federal government to go from 52.6% to 35%, and for the states to go from 26.72 to 42%. I mean, like I said, that's not the main problem. The main problem is you have a state who you have a lot of the Nigerian states who are not self-sustaining, over bloated, you know, um, uh, government, both at the federal and the state level. So I think more important than ever, you know, the governors should start to look at how they can sweat the assets, the potential, and the benefit of their state to become self-sustaining while they are still pushing, you know, for this kind of revised um, 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 formula. Uh, before we move on from the nation, yeah. I'd like to take your thoughts on this latest yeah. from the defense headquarters. Oh. Or you want to speak on the governor's yes, issue? Yes. You have to do that briefly so we can capture as much okay, headlines as we can. I have a problem with the governors. I agree with what he said. But my problem with these governors is that they're just lazy thinkers. How many, have they had any meeting on how to increase their revenue? Have they thought about how they can collaborate to increase their own internally generated revenue? Mm. That's one. Secondly, they should be pushing for fiscal federalism where they can have their own autonomy, where they can do things by themselves, like he said. They need to look inward. They need, they, I don't think there's any state in Nigeria who doesn't have one thing or the other. Okay, I, I, I'd like to take your thoughts on this latest from the defense headquarters saying that uh, Boko Haram are no longer operating in Nigeria. I'll take that one as the last uh, headline from the nation newspaper. Well, we, I heard that on the news. I've not really read the story. <laughs> but the truth is that I've said it here before. These people, they come out and give us statements without proof. To back it up. Yes, that's, 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 it's, it's a big problem. Now, all the areas where Boko Haram have taken over in the Northeast, are they back in the hands of Nigeria? That's, that's the question. You should be telling us, oh, we've taken this back, people have been resettled, we've taken this back, people have been resettled. Then you now come out with this. Now we know where they are operating from. I have a, I have a bit of a professional um, perspective to 
what you've said and what the headline is. So technically, the, 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 um, the, the, the Nigerian military and or the, the Nigerian defense clearly has lost a lot of media and trust equity. Because if they issue something that is supposed to make all of us start rejoicing yeah. and then we're doubting them, I think that that's something that they really need to work on. You know, uh, well, when, the when they know that there is this doubt, that it's just the same concern you're expressing, when the, um, the military people know that there is this doubt, wouldn't it be more sensitive to find a way to properly ward these headlines to take into consideration the sensitivities of the people that they're trying to protect. Because if blatantly, like what you both is saying, people are not, um, they don't trust what they're saying, they don't believe yeah. that Nigeria is completely free of Boko Haram, yeah. then so where when does that the, leave when, us? When the defense headquarter and the chief security officer of the state yeah. cannot agree on something sensitive, we generally have a bigger problem on our hands. I mean, the headline in another paper is talking about, you know, the Bono governor insisting that there are still some Nigerian territory. Yes, on that. So I'm, the, the question I'm asking is that, so the question I'm asking is that, is it, saying what? how can the chief security officer of state, the governor of the state, is claiming that there's still some part of my state that are under you know, the, the, the control of the terrorists. And the defense headquarters is saying that, oh, no, they are not operating from Nigeria. Those are two strong authorities yeah. speaking two, two different, different things. things. So there's, there's clearly a Just there. to bring you up to speed um, on what the papers are saying, the mm. This Day newspaper is putting it, DHQ counters Bonu government, insist no Nigerian territory under terrorist control. And that's what uh, Tupac is trying to explain to us. And they went on to put, explains delay in rescuing Leah Sharibu, other hostages. I don't know if you read this one in detail as well, the um, issue with uh, Leah Sharibu. I mean, the um, hostage um, um, rescue is not a walk in the park. And I don't even think that there's enough explanations that the, the, that the defense headquarters can give on the pages of newspaper to give us a true picture. But there are simpler things that are not being taken care of. And if the simple things are not being taken care of, the more complex thing, you know, there's a, there's a lot of doubt that the more complex thing will be taken care of. So if I'm going to, and that's why I said from a pro professional perspective, I'll have expected that all the stakeholders will be on the same page. If I'm going to issue something this Absolutely. sensitive, a statement this sensitive that there is no territory on that, you know, um, the control of the terrorists. The stakeholders, I have to do proper checks. Who are the key stakeholders that I'm speaking to to say, oh, do you know of any territory that we don't know of that is still under the control yeah. of, of, of the terrorists? Bring it to our attention. Or I'm calling um, um, non-governmental agencies. I'm calling the locals. I'm calling the chiefs in th those areas to say, I've spoken to key stakeholders in those areas, mm -hmm. and they've told me that this is what there's relative, is. yes, do you understand? Okay, let's, let's see it's all the headlines. Um, this day, still on this day, this time I'll, I'll go to Femi, yeah. uh, presidency denying alleged third term agenda again uh, <laughs> by Bukhari. <laughs> is this denial really necessary, or does it now begin to worry you? Well, one, the denial is not necessary, and then it's worrisome, because the president himself has come out to say he doesn't have a hand in it and he's not going to go that route but there's a possibility there are some members of his political party or the ruling party trying to do something of such which is why it becomes a recurring decimal this has been coming up all, over and over again so Nigerians should just be uh, vigilant and uh, aware of what is going to come in the next two years uh, as we see on the back page of this day, we have something with Ruben Abate, and today he's talking about Nigeria, U.S., and the question of religious freedom. Um, you must have uh, read in the yeah, news about yes, Nigeria yeah. being uh, not tolerant a uh, place to practice your religion. But let's just move on uh, <laughs> to other papers. Let's see what's on the Punch newspaper. Uh, there's, a head, there's a headline that's captured on this date that I want us to pick from the Punch, and it has to do with the oil wells. It's a PDP steps in as Wicked Dixon rift deepens. 
Um, for this day, they put it as Soku oil wells belong to Rivers VK insist. Uh, that is um, an ongoing uh, situation there. We have Jam Fixes 2020 UTME for March 14 to April 4. No date yet for border reopening, mm -hmm. says federal government. Yeah. Um, my guess that, let me just, uh, what do you, before we go to the big one that's screaming at us here, two plus two. No date yet for border reopening, says federal government. Uh, is this a good move, in your opinion? Um, I've always said it that the border closure is a double-edged sword. And um, you have to drag it very, very carefully. Um, the, the, um, our ports are not efficient enough to handle the pressure that the continuous border closure yeah. is putting on the port. We have to be very sincere about that. The number two thing is that we don't really have very secured per, um, borders oh, around Nigeria. Nice. We have a very porous borders. So yes, the, the, the real borders might be closed, but things are sipping out. And I'll take you quickly to a news item somewhere. I don't know, one of the newspapers were talking about the customs fighting over checkpoint. There's only one story there. <laughs> the there's, a, there's a cookie jar somewhere. <laughs> yes. There is money to, there be, is made. Money to yes. be made. Unfortunately. Also. But I, I had an interesting experience on the borders in, um, coming into this country. Smaller countries, you go to their borders, everything is seamless. And yeah. then you get to the Nigerian border. You begin yeah. to, you just know that, that you're in Nigeria. Yeah, and yeah. not in a good way. You just yeah. know that you're into Nigeria yeah. from the um, behavior of the officials at yes, the yeah, checkpoint absolutely. and the road our, itself. Our Welcome to you to Nigeria. Our problem is a systemic problem, so. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's, let's, show let's, in different ways. <laughs> let's see the big one that's screaming at us from the Punch newspaper on the front page. You are looking at, okay, not yet, you're not looking at it, but it should, that's it. APC rejects Obasaki's call to dissolve peace panel. Governor not ready for true reconciliation, that's party leader. And then NWC resolves round only Oshomole. Yeah, Obasaki. Says Obasaki. Femi, let's get you on that one first. Well, what, what the party said is, uh, I think it was November 18, they set up a, a peace commission uh, with some big members of the party to look into a state problem. But the governor is refusing now because he claims every member of that committee are uh, they revolve around Oshomole. So it's not a true reconciliation process for him. So he's calling for the dissolution of that peace panel. Okay. Uh, what's your take on um, that? I, I, I completely agree. When I saw, before I even read the uh, rider, that's, that's the first thing that came to mind. Uh, um, um, that, that's definitely going to be the problem. And um, more, very, very embarrassing is this rift between Governor Basaki and um, Oshomole, because um, I think that is a very dirty fight that you're asking, why is the chairman of a party? And none of them have been able to come out and say exactly, it's exactly what, what the, the problem, problem is. Yeah, exactly. So it's starting to look like this fight it's is personal more personal than, than the people. people. I yeah. thought that this was really about the people. You know, it's, it's very, very Good sad question. and, you know, embarrassing. Yeah. Okay, the Abuja protest is also captured on the Punch newspaper this morning. And um, uh, just been at it. Uh, the Punch is going with Togs attack Abuja anti-government protest, brutalizes activists. Just been at it. You will see court rejects Oji Kalu's post-conviction bail request. Uh, he's going to be spending Christmas uh, in prison. Yeah. Uh, drunken policemen shoot comedian dead in Ogun. That's a sad one on page yeah. four yeah, and sure. five. That's where you see details. Um, still on the front page. Reps nightclub causes noise pollution, gridlock. Police is speaking on... Uh, you know, Pella's uh, situation. Yeah. Uh, you also see details on page four and five of the paper. And uh, on the other side, you are looking at fraud star poses as my wife buys on credits. Oshu's deputy governor is shame. speaking. <laughs> what would we say? What a shame. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's going on? Go read details on page nine of the paper. Ibado uh, Obas denied dropping crowns for promotion. I'll just leave it open-ended. Pick which of this headline you want to speak on first. Oh, okay. So I'll, I'll talk about the nightclub um, issue. So um, I, I mean, the first 
Um, news that hit the airways yesterday was from the PRO of Honorable Shinopella saying that he was arrested, you know, without really explaining what. Then the police came up and said, oh, he came with talks to the police station. And I've been waiting for a counter from um, the PRO again to say, no, he didn't come to the station with talks. More importantly is the real issue. How did we even get there? Is the fact that there's a nightclub that is constantly causing, you know, um, 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 gridlock in the morning. And, you know, this uh, funny, dirty December that we've not really put a the structure around <laughs> is very embarrassing. Because the question is, when you have a nightclub that has the capacity to hold over 100 people in a place like Nigeria, where is the parking space for that nightclub? Um, who approve? the nightclub to be right at on the highway, a very busy one at that. So while we're, I mean, uh, like I said, I want to still hear again from the side of uh, Honorable Shino Pena what happened. But what is very, very clear is that there's a nightclub somewhere that doesn't have the parking that it requires for that nightclub. So that's the first problem and that has to be fixed because if it's not fixed, we're going to have that news this year and next year because this has been happening and this happens yeah. even when we are not in the festive period, when you're going out, maybe Saturday morning sometimes, you'd, you, you'd wonder why there's traffic on Uzumba Madu and then you'll find out that it's because some people have taken about a lane, you know, off the road because of the nightclub. So I think that you have to solve that problem. If you don't have enough parking, then you have to get enough relocate. parking. Yeah, or, or relocate. So I think that's a bigger issue that has to be dealt with immediately. Okay, um, I was still on the point. We'll just take a quick look at what's on the back page, Measuring Academic Excellence. Um, I, it just caught my attention because I'm wondering how do you really measure academic excellence today when all the um, yardsticks that you can use has been compromised yeah. in some one way or the other. Yeah. But you might want to go read that one for yourself mm -hmm. uh, later. We move on to the Vanguard newspaper. Um, what, where the story that really stands out for me this morning is the situation with the missing boy. Um, we heard the, I don't know if you gentlemen have been following the story, yeah, Akure yeah. Pastor weeps as court sends him six others to prison over missing boy. That's how the Vanguard is capturing that story this morning. Um, Khan wades into a Basagir Shemile feud. Dixon colluded with APC to lose by Elsa. Mm -hmm. That's weak a bit of uh, politics for you there. And then Nigeria earns five trillion naira from oil in 11 months. Yeah, why I won't hear Shawari's suit against DSS. That story we've already taken care of it. And then the issue of minimum wage and uh, revenue sharing formula also on the front page. But Femi, this situation, first off, the church was burnt down on the allegation that there was a missing boy in the pulpit that wasn't found. And now we have the situation. Uh, we do, what, what do you know about the story? And your well, quickly. I've, I've not really gone, gone deep in the story. I've heard it bit by different quarters. But you just, I will relate it back to what the American said about our religion tolerance. Uh, when I heard the story about the American saying Nigeria is a, a non-tolerant state for religion, I will say I, I said it's, that's not true because Nigeria is free to practice your religion. Oh, it's how, how we practice the it religion matters. that is a big issue here. If you look at this, this story now, a church is being indicted for a missing. Because there are so many churches who don't even have the right structure in place. They just allow crowd to come. Yeah. They don't have health and safety in place. They don't care about, they just want people to come, mammoth crowd come in, and they just want to pass their message and get whatever they want to get from the people. And then a missing child could have gone with the crowd. Somebody can, could have come into the church and picked the child. But now the church has to pay for it. And then so the, the pastor is being so sent to jail. Maybe you're because suggesting we should take more security measures in churches to ensure that scenarios like this don't come yeah, up again. Yeah, I think we just need to do things properly. Yeah, we just need to have <laughs> organized uh, places of worship. Worship, yeah. Then we need to put, we can't say because it's churches, we don't have health and safety in place. I, in Lagos, they're trying to clamp down on noise pollution of uh, worship houses, both mosques and churches. These are things that we need to put in place. So I, I, the church might not know, the pastor and the people that have been arrested, might not necessarily, I'm not saying they're free or they're clean, 
they might not necessarily know I'm about the missing boy. Um, but because of their own negligence. Now, yeah. So I'll just get your thoughts in three seconds. If I, you can like I, 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 in three seconds. <laughs> can we just learn to do things properly? <laughs> if you have a church that is going to accommodate 100, 200 people, they're yeah. going to be kids. Can you have enough processes? Can you have systems in place yeah. so that the egress and the, e uh, you know, and the movement of people is not ampered and people are not put in arms way. So when you tell someone that this building or this place is going, a church is going to be built there and it's going to hold this number of people, you have to tick the boxes to be able to properly hold those people and not put them exactly. in danger. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for Thank coming you. on Thank the program this morning. And I wish you a very lovely Christmas tomorrow. You too. You too. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thank season. you. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to you watching. Hope you have fun with your family. Still, don't forget to know what the papers are saying. So after the celebrations, you know what's going on in the country. Take care of yourself and enjoy the rest of your day. My name is Felicity Izewiki.